This conference will now be recorded. All right, it is 9.04 a.m. Uh, we are uh, going to call the meeting to order. I noticed we have several online. Thank you for joining us. Uh, we have uh, Councillor <laughs> Councilor Kennard, if you could please just unmute for just a moment. Let's just make sure your microphone is working so we can ensure you're present. Can you hear me? We sure can. Thank you so much, uh, Councillor Kennard. And we see several others. Uh, Councillor Stubbs is with us as well. Councillor Stubbs, at any time that you uh, would like to interject, if you uh, just unmute and let us know, you're more than welcome to do so. We have several. Uh, uh, can, you, can you go ahead and unmute and let's just make sure we can hear you as well, Councillor Stubbs. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you for joining us. We've got several from the public. Thank you all. And we will uh, give you an opportunity at the end of the meeting for public participation, if you have any. And uh, for Miss Rita Kane, cookie maker, the cookies are delicious. Thank you so much, ma'am. So, all right, we've got several online. We've uh, called the meeting to order. We have uh, Councillor Roebuck, Councillor Kennard, myself present. Uh, Councillor Orpesa, if, if you're online, if you can just say so, if not, we'll, we'll know you're not here. Is Councillor Orpesa online? Hey, I don't see anyone unmuting, so uh, I think that shows that we're all here, except for Councillor Orpesa. If I could, please get a uh, motion to approve the agenda. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the agenda as presented. We have a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Approval of the minutes. Did anyone have any corrections they desire to see made of the minutes? Hearing none, the minutes will stand approved as presented. Uh, informational reports. Okay, Mr. Chair, committee members, we'll start with our monthly GRT report uh, for February 2022, where we actually collected uh, for the month 3.6 million uh, gross receipts check. Uh, we budgeted 3.2, so we're still up uh, 396,000 for the month. As you can see on the graph, uh, we're still hovering above the February budgeted projections and even last year, uh, the last two years. Uh, which is good. Uh, so we'll go to the next slide. This slide shows, uh, illustrates what we've collected year to date uh, with 26.5 million collected uh, as of from January, July to February. Uh, we budgeted 23.6, so we're up $2.9 million in GRT. We anticipate the next month will also uh, hover above the prior years. Again, a lot of it is attributed to the online Can we move uh, sales. The, uh... Yes. Yeah, we'll move that over would be great. Wonderful. Thank you. And uh, so as you can see there, you see the prior years going back to 1920 to 21 uh, for the same period. 1920. Fiscal year 19. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's <the> last meeting. <laughs> so, okay, so we'll go to next. And I'll have Jamie cover this budget slide. Uh, we've started uh, working on our fiscal year 23 uh, budget. We're starting with the operating section first. Uh, at our uh, senior staff on Tuesday, we talked a little bit about this. Um, it's open and available for uh, departments to review right now. It's being based on the revised uh, fiscal year 22 budgets. So uh, we're anticipating just a little movement in those. Um, departments will review and move what, is, what they need to by this Friday. Uh, revenue projections and departmental positions for payroll will be updated between March 7th and March 18th. Uh, I met with HR yesterday and we've got a game plan going for that on vacant positions and what we're going to do. Um, department review meetings will begin March 28th through April 8th. Uh, April 8 uh, will also be the capital uh, projects plan will be um, completed uh, and ready for management to review. Juan is taking the lead on that with the department directors. Uh, the finalized preliminary budget we're uh, looking at between April 11th and April 22nd. 
uh, the preliminary budgets due to the Department of Finance and Administration on June 1st, and then the final was due on July 31st. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Uh, not at this time for me. Any, any questions? No. Councillor Councillor Kennard, any questions? No, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, committee member, so I just wanted to kind of show you just a, a recap of the success for receiving capital outlay money. And uh, I want to show you here that we have two bills, Senate Bill 48, which is known as the House Bill 2 Junior. Uh, that allocated in that bill 100000 for to purchase and equip vehicles for uh, Roswell Police Department, 100000 for street repairs, 95000 to expand educational program services and tours of the animal enclosures at the Roswell Zoo, and 50,000 to expand program services at the Roswell Adult Center. Uh, under capital uh, outlay bill, Senate Bill 212, we have the RAC, the airport improvements for 5 million, the fire department training facility, 500,000, all-inclusive park, 853,500, the museum at 369,000, Washington Street improvements, 540, and the Roswell Street improvements, $360,000. Both bills uh, have been sent to the governor and she has until noon on March 9th to approve or line item veto any or all of the projects. Uh, so uh, we're hoping that all of these projects uh, will survive, uh, but we won't know until she signs the bill. But this is what we are in line to receive uh, for the 2022 legislative session. So let me let me say a couple of things publicly uh, here concerning this. Uh, number one uh, is that I will be uh, uh, making a call uh, to the fourth floor to the governor's office to to discuss these things today uh, to sort of ensure that there's no questions that need to be answered uh, to, for finalization of this. I want to publicly thank our uh, senators and our uh, uh, representatives who worked very hard on this. I received several phone calls from several of them asking about projects. Uh, I uh, went up, I, I want to say, uh, uh, Mr. Fuentes here and Councillor Stubbs and I, we, we went up and spent a few days up there talking with the uh, senators, the representatives, and, uh, 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 and I just want to give uh, very, very, very strong kudos to Councillor Stubbs. She was a very very uh, integral part of us receiving these finances. Uh, we went up there, uh, Councilor Stubbs has had just a very good rapport on both sides of the aisles for a for decades now. And uh, uh, she just knows how to work in Santa Fe and to talk with people and to how to get around up there and with the Municipal League. And uh, so we were able to get in with the governor and spend about 45 minutes with the governor uh, face to face and uh, the governor was very interested in helping us. That's where that five million comes from there. Uh, I wanna say uh, kudos to a, uh, a Senator um, a Pirtle uh, was very active in a lot of what we see here. Uh, Senator Nib uh, Senator Ni Representative Nyburn Ezell and, and uh, Anderson were very interested in getting the all-inclusive part done and, and uh, get that up and working for our kids here in Roswell. So I'm just very, very excited. They were, they were very good at listening uh, to what we had on the list and what our, our priorities were. And they were, they were very, uh, very good at that. And I'm, I'm especially grateful as well, I'll say this, uh, uh, to uh, 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 Representative Anderson. Uh, he's probably the one up there that understands the arts and the need for uh, funding of the, um, Museum. So after sitting and speaking with uh, uh, Representative Anderson, uh, he was very gracious to try to get those projects at the museum taken care of. So uh, Roswell really won significantly. If you look across it, uh, how a lot of people were funded, we really, really came out shining. And uh, I just want to thank uh, publicly Councillor Stubbs for her part in that. And uh, I'll just look forward to seeing how we want to put these monies to work. It's going to be good. Do you have anything to add on that? <laughs> All right, uh, Councilor Kenner, do you have any questions or anything to add to that? No, sir, thank you. Thank you, all right. What else have we got? Uh, we'll go to Lodger Sachs reports. Good morning, um, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Um, this is just an update from the last time uh, we had Fairfield Inn and Suites, um, as well as Town Place by Marriott. Um, they did pay their lodger's tax for September, October, November, 
and partial payment of December. Um, they did pay the payment for December, but did not pay the late fee for December. Same company. Same company. Right. Yes, sure. uh, same company. Um, we did send them a, a notification about their miscalculation on their part. Um, they have been in contact with our city attorney um, as well as our bookkeeping. Um, both of them combined, or I'm sorry, both of them combined was about 120,000 in past due collections. So when I show you the report um, that you're going to see, it does not include September, October, November, and December. Those will be reflective at next month's meeting. For January, as of yesterday, uh, we were missing Baymont, Fairfield Inn, Holiday Inn Express, Home Two Suites, Motel Six, and Town Place. Um, what that means is it could potentially be in the mail, but that's kind of we're tracking when they're coming in. We are also working on notification letters just to remind them. Again, uh, you know, we had sent them out last month, but again, a friendly reminder will be helpful. Uh, for one second, real quickly, uh, so I understand the estimated of about 60,000 past due collections, is that still what is outstanding still? That's what they paid us. Okay, so where is the 120? Uh, it was 60,000 for Fairfield Inn and about 60,000 okay, that's for, what I want to understand. Uh, town Place. Okay, and uh, Mike, I'll just mention for, for the two of y'all, depending on who's going to be the next chair of finance, uh, I, I would like to see for us just to continue and let's get this fixed as to our our uh, our, our collection date. Okay. Um, I think that that's going to solve a lot of issues pulling that back. Yes. It'll at least solve the questions and the confusion of coming to, because you will have had a full month's worth before it comes to mm -hmm. the council. So yes. um, is that does that take council action or committee action or is that an internal? It, it does because it's via ordinance. Okay. So one of the um, things, the reason we hadn't done it is because we wanted to get them caught up and give them the reminder. Um, legal mentioned, let's get them where they need to be and then reiterate their, the new ordinance once again. And I think I agree with that. My only concern <laughs> is I think that every month somebody's going to be behind. Right. So uh, at some point we're just going to have to pull the pull the trigger. So uh, whether it goes through finance or goes through through legal, I'd like to have that considered moving forward as quickly as possible. Okay. <laughs> we Let's get that done. Um, so here is our collections for lodgers tax. Um, one thing that you'll notice, so we're still at 40.2%, but if you were to look at last January's um, numbers, um, which we're not quite there yet, but even if you looked at last December's from 2020 and then January of 2021, we actually grew 5%. So that's a really good indication that we're you know, on the road to recovery. Again, these numbers are not reflective of that 120,000 that is outstanding. So we're really hopeful um, that in this next fiscal year, uh, we will be closer to that 65%, which then allows us to provide funding for outside organizations for use of lodgers tax. Um, so it's looking better. It's not great, but definitely looking better than where we were um, a year ago, an uh, increase of 5%. So, Can I just ask you, uh, I've always felt like, because from talking to people from out of state and stuff, because they don't understand necessarily how mask mandates and stuff work. They're assuming that they're going to be, there's a, a strong force where maybe it's not always uh, done. So do you think that now that that has been lifted by the state, that, that that's going to help us? Is that I do. Um, I, I know from just some of our tourism conversations that we've had with our partners around the state, um, we were losing a lot of visitation. We were kind of a pass-through and they were going to Texas and Arizona versus coming here. We were getting a lot of calls in our visitor center. Are you open? Do you have to wear a mask? Do you have to be vaccinated? Do you have to show a card? I think with um, even looking at the hotels and where we dipped down, it was because they couldn't operate. They couldn't be open because of the state mandates. And so now that those most of them are lifted, I think we're going to see an increase. Did, did did President Biden lift as well, or did he not? His mandates, it's still the federal still. Okay, I didn't know. Okay. All right. Um, the next slide is our... Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to maybe put a uh, plant a seed. Um, something that we were working on before the shutdowns, et cetera, was we, uh, we the staff had uh, created a... Uh, signature events policy um and we had we had accepted it as a council but we put a one-year this was probably before you're back on we put we put a one-year moratorium on it mm -hmm. this was 
so you might you might you i'm sure you're aware of some of the hubbub that came about this year when the, when the fair was open again and we hadn't didn't know who was going to provide police support etc i haven't heard anything but i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> Last <meeting. laughs> um uh, in going back and revisiting some some of those issues that came up with the fair um, and talking with with uh, with Joe about it a little bit is that so the, the, what the the plan had been is that the council had put a, a, a they had brought forward a the staff had brought forward a uh, a, a, a signature events resolution and this was to give the the staff and the city the ability to help certain events that they felt were critical to the to the economic development and tourism etc. Um, uh, and the reason why the time the council put a moratorium on us because we we didn't we we liked it we wanted to move forward but we felt like that it needed it needed another round of adjustments so we gave it one year but then because the, the pandemic happened and et cetera et cetera and all the shutdowns um we never got back to that work and so consequently and, and i guess basically we forgot about it right and then it came out i think that as as with the money returns i think it's important that the council go back and revisit that concept because it wasn't there wasn't it wasn't inherently problem with it I think just at the time um, we wanted to uh, maybe do a, another draft on it like it was it was fine for the year that we did it but we just wanted to take it if I remember correctly and one of you can, can jump in or correct me but uh, we wanted to take it and and we could give it another version I, I think and update it so and certainly now it need to be updated anyway because you don't know, have to spike it and, right. and some other things so um, I, I would just encourage uh, the council going forward and, and staff to bring that back again um, so that so that those issues about how we deal with that, um, because because I think the the perception out there was that that the city didn't want to help these these signature events, and I don't think that's true at all. What that happened was the, what happened was a sort of this the series of unfortunate events due to due to the shutdown and and not getting back on top of that. So. And um, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, if I may, we are working on the new lodger's tax application process. So we had planned to have it ready. Unfortunately, our occupancy tax board could not meet because we did not have a quorum. Um, we have two vacant positions. We have two um, members that have submitted their application that will be going um, forth to um, the committee for review and then on um, to the mayor for appointment and approval. Um, our goal is still to have that rolled out by April 1st um, for for events because I do feel that we're close enough to the 65 that we can, uh, you know, have that 100,000 be divided up by the organizations. Um, again, going through that process, it'll look very similar to the process that we go through for lodgers tax awarding of marketing dollars with the state. So yeah. that is coming. Great. All right. Um, the next slide is your uh, bed fee. Again, we're pretty pretty consistent um, as the last slide. Again, doesn't include those two hotels. You guys will see that in the next um, um, next month's meeting, or which is the January report, because again, they have till the 25th of the month, so we're always a month behind. Um, sitting at 40.2 percent um, available room nights uh, remain the same. Um, no really influx, um, no new hotels or and no closures. That's the end of my report <clears throat> for that one. Um, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, at the last meeting it was requested that we give you an overview of the UFO Festival um, for the 75th anniversary. So today I brought our team um, who is helping coordinate uh, the events and the logistics. So I'd like to introduce them to you and to the public. Um, to my right, I have Johnny Hector Lujan, who is our videographer for the city. Um, to my left, I have Miss Sarah Bradley. She's our marketing coordinator. And then um, next to her is Renee Puckett. She is our events and marketing coordinator as well. Um, Miss Puckett will be our main point of contact for the festival uh, along with my help. Um, and so you'll go to the next slide. Um, our strategy changed just a, a tiny bit. Uh, because it's the 75th, we wanted to have something a little bit bigger. Um, we are going to stick to more regional uh, capacity rather than uh, really kind of extending out to kind of east part of Texas and California. Um, our focus is really going to be on West Texas and Arizona, as well as the El Paso market and Albuquerque. Um, if you click to the next slide. Again, we went through a um, SWOT analysis at the beginning of August, and we had 
looked at what you know what was the the needs again interactive experiences is what our goal kind of like our anchors a permanent fixture of a crash site is something that is needed um, real-time updates on event changes and a VIP uh, ticketing solution those were some of the things that we ran into and lessons learned um, from last year I'm happy to report that a permanent fixture of the crash site we have a um, company a business partner in our community who is working on that um, as well as um, the real-time updates we will have an app that we'll be launching in about 30 days called visit widget what do you mean about a permanent fixture um, so we get a lot of visitors in the visitor center. I actually just got a letter from a visitor that when they come to Roswell, their experience, while it's okay, it's not a aha or wow or gives them um, a returning, like, I have to come back and do this again. And the biggest request that we get in the visitor center is where is the crash site? And so um, we had an opportunity to work with the state tourism to do uh, product development and have the city create a crash site that would then be operated by the visitor center staff offering tours or have an external business um, kind of do that and we support it like we support our other downtown businesses. Um, I saw that as a need for the city because we don't really have a, an interactive experience that will kind of keep them here all day long. Where would that be at? Um, my understanding is this business partner is looking out um, south of town um, and they are currently working on it. So um, the real time updates, again, that's our Visit Widget app um, that we've partnered uh, with Visit Widget, City of our Village of Rio Doso uh, does it as well as uh, City of Santa Fe. And then our VIP ticketing solution, that was one of our challenges last year. So we have some solutions if you'll, um, and we'll give you some details on the next page. Um, this right here is a mobile app. Um, it was designed and created for DMOs, which we are the DMO for the city of Roswell. Um, one of the biggest challenges we had last year was um, emergency communication or location change. Obviously, we had a huge rainstorm. We had a lot of challenges. Um, where we had to move things inside, move them outside, move vendors. So this will give us a seamless planning for visitation uh, visitors that are signing up to come to the festival. There won't be a charge, they'll just download it and we'll be sending out, um, if they sign up for a text message, we can send them that. The other great thing on this mobile app is we have the capability of doing um, ads. It'll be very similar to our C Roswell site where the communication and the information is, is similar, um, but we also have an interactive walking map availability so it'll pinpoint them where they are in the city and give them a map um, and directional um, access to where they wanna go. So if they type in, I wanna eat pizza or I wanna um, see alien stuff or I wanna do art, they'll put that in the search bar and then the most current locations of that will pop up. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> our website and social. So these are our handles, ufofestival.com, um, hashtag Roswell UFO Fest. Um, we did have a few challenges with our website as we last year we had partnered with an external company, a third party vendor who uh, built it and managed it in the last couple of months. And I would say in the last month, Ms. Puckett uh, utilized her skills and talents to rebuild our website because it was not it was not ours. So we had to who is that? Uh, Ms. Puckett right here. But yeah, introduce folks to us. So we One more time. OK, so this is Renee Puckett. Oh, um, wow. This is Sarah Bradley and Johnny Hector Lujan. And tell everybody job titles what we're doing. Um, so event and marketing coordinator, our marketing coordinator overall city, and then our videographer. Our new Bob Barker. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, so she was able to rebuild our, our site, um, have more information. It's a work in progress, so it's not 100% complete, but it does have the most um, important information right now last week we launched our sponsorship and our vendor applications um we had hoped to have vendor applications out on february 1st and then there were just some some issues with the website on on our part that we needed to fix we wanted to get it right and not put something out there and then have to go back and change it so um we invite the public and everybody to you know get on ufofestival.com there's a link for contact us we'll be sending out more information and in about 30 days we'll have our visit widget um included in that we're in our test uh, beta testing right now for that next slide 
festival events. Um, so again, our the our focus is the experience of the visitor. We want to make sure that um, they have a really great interactive experience and provide them a variety of things to do while they're here and hopefully um, give them more things that they're not able to do in those three days so that they return book a returning visit. Um, our current expected cost is about $250,000, which is $50,000 more than what the council has approved. Um, but we do see that we will get a return on that investment through lodgers tax, the bed fee, the overall economic impact. The whole reason we do this festival as a city is we want to provide um, visitation into our restaurants, into the businesses for shopping, uh, fuel, all of those different things. Um, and again, our goal is to get a large sponsor to offset some of those costs um, for ticket sales and as ticket sales and merchandise only cover a portion of the expenses. Uh, we did receive $9,000 in grant funding towards Facebook marketing from the state um, and we are a special event recovery readiness initiative partner with the state um, that is helping us with the large corporate sponsorships. So the packet that was in your um, <laughs> The presentation that was in your packet was the draft format of the national sponsorship levels. Um, some people called us and said, how do you expect a local business to provide $150,000 in Roswell? And so that is not for our locals, that is really for national partners. Next slide. Um, this is a, our events in detail. And so what I'd like to do now is I'd like to turn it over to um, our team to kind of go over some, some of our, what we're calling our interactive experiences that our guests can, um, can experience. So I'm gonna turn it over to Johnny and he's gonna talk to you about Alien Crawl um, for UFO Festival. Yes, um, Alien Crawl. So of course, who likes to have fun? We all do, right? And that is the main purpose of people who are coming here. <laughs> um, but even they like to have fun. <laughs> um, so the whole point is for our tourists to come here and want to stay and enjoy their time. So what this is, is it's an amazing tour of Roswell um, through some of their most unique restaurants um, with authentic food and beverages. See, so we're going to have a party bus that is going to load up guests from the Civic Center. Now this is going to be during the midday, not at night. So during the midday they will start approximately about 11. What we'll do is we'll have two routes, a north and a south route. They will buy their tickets on which route they want to take. Then from there we'll introduce them to all of the unique tastings, the beverages, a nice little tour of Roswell, and the unique experiences that I've already talked to some of these local restaurants that we'll give them such as tequila, beer, and wine tasting. Um, I didn't know this, but there's a certain way you're supposed to drink tequila. Um, and right now it's, it's, it, it's, it's not the kind from Russia. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But Go ahead. <laughs> these are experiences that our local establishments want to bring to the tourists. And along with this, because we are traveling them through the city of Roswell, we will have somebody on the bus explaining certain things, entertaining certain things, saying, hey, look to your left, this is the county courthouse. Of course, make jokes, who's the farthest from here? To increase their experience here in Roswell. Um, and then of course, returning them back to the Civic Center, I mean, excuse me, the Convention Center, just in time for the evening's events for the UFO Festival. Now here's where it gets even better for the local restaurants because now that they had a taste of these local restaurants, they're still there with enough time to go back and revisit the ones that they really enjoyed. So um, that is the alien crawl in essence and um, I'm really looking forward to it because I think it, I see it as a real highlight for a lot of the tourists to get that interactive experience and visit the locals local restaurants and bring some money to the local economy. Our other um, couple of other things is glow in the dark golf that will be handled at um, Nancy Lopez golf course. Have y'all ever done that before? Uh, we have not. But it is really, I have. We I hear have. It's, a it's a lot of fun. Of fun. Yeah. Again, just trying to provide more opportunities. You'll notice that most of our events focus on nighttime. Again, our goal is to get them to stay overnight the next night. 
Uh, Spring River Zoo, they're currently working on a kid-friendly activities with extraterrestrial beings. Obviously, we have some animals there, but they're a great um, collaboration. They're working with the Blacklight Experience, the wards to do that. Uh, we're also working with the Air Center on a flight tour of the Air Center, uh, Hangar 84. And then we also feel it's really important to support the Walker Aviation Museum. And we want to provide that shuttle service to our visitors at no cost to get them out there to experience that. The museum and planetarium, uh, they'll have their escape room and their planetarium shows. We're currently working on a Broadway interactive show um, that will be on the west side of the convention center. Um, again, family friendly, uh, trying to incorporate our local arts um, here. And then our headlining show, I'll come back to that, um, Alien Chase, our Galaxy Celebration, and then I'm going to turn it over to Miss Bradley to talk about the night sky and morning hike. So our night sky and morning hike event will be taking place um, over the course of three, two evenings and the morning of July 3rd. It will be at Bottomless Lakes. The night sky event, which will be July 1st and 2nd, will be ranger led. The ranger will take the group out to um, a great stargazing spot and the group will spend time looking through a telescope, um, learning all about the night sky from an astronomer who has agreed to um, take part in the event from the astronomy club. And of course, you know, that will take place over the course of two nights. And then our morning hike will be July, the morning of July 3rd. The hike is about 1.9 miles out and back. It will be ranger led as well. Um, they'll have the opportunity to enjoy the scenery, um, nature. They'll get to see a few lakes, wildflowers, and this will take place at about 5.30 a.m. And um, they'll be taken to a great spot to view our wonderful sunsets or sunrises. And um, that will be, we'll offer breakfast um, options afterwards for the hike. Um, the headlining show, um, I'm happy to report we have partnered with the Liberty, uh, Mr. Josh Ragsdale. Um, we have a signed contract for a headlining artist. Uh, we will be releasing the name of that artist along with the opening acts on March 21st. Tickets will go on sale on March 25th. Uh, we're very excited about the headlining show. Um, we're very grateful to this council for giving us some additional funding so we could get a higher level of entertainer. Uh, that is where majority of our funding has gone. And we recognize that we do have to get sponsorships to cover the costs of, of these other things. So we're hoping to have that support from the community. I'm gonna turn it over now uh, to Ms. Renee Puckett. She's gonna talk to you a little bit about our galaxy celebration um, and what um, visitors will experience with that. So, um... We're working on doing a, um, we're gonna call it a galaxy fair celebration. Um, we're gonna have some family friendly activities there. Um, lots of things for kids to do. Um, make it really fun for people to bring their kids out and enjoy the whole event. Um, we're gonna have a um, beer garden and some music, some entertainment. Uh, music entertainment out there and um, and it's I think it's just gonna be really fun we're gonna make it just a really great family activity and um, and then of course uh, the other thing that everybody gets to do fun fun things but <laughs> I'm the one that's working on you know <clears throat> the logistics the porta potties <laughs> the trash the uh, you know, getting volunteers and, and just basically organizing the event. And um, so I'm kind of jealous because they get to do <laughs> alien crawls and night sky things, but anyway. But she's very, very important. Yeah, but <laughs> hiking. You won't catch me hiking all the way, I can tell you that. <laughs> um, if you'll go to the next slide for me. We are also, um, we have had a variety of community meetings uh, with some of our community partners. Um, 
We are still collecting information. Um, so this is a very preliminary list. Um, we sent out a form to each of the groups that had been coming to these meetings. Um, unfortunately, we've only received one form back, but from the meetings in the conversations, this is what we believe each of these groups um, are doing. Uh, Main Street Roswell is participating in a passport program at the County Courthouse Lawn and the Pet Costume Contest. Uh, the UFO Museum, um, it, they're gonna do speakers, have their authors, um, my understanding is they're doing it at the museum and as well as the convention center. Roswell Little Theater will continue to do Battle of the Bands. Uh, the Roswell Daily Record will um, also have speakers. I, we don't know the location yet. Um, Galacticon is the forum that we've received back so far. Um, they are sponsoring the a uh, human costume contest on the courthouse lawn, uh, booths at the convention center and doing their overall um, sci-fi film Galacticon experience. And then the Roswell Invaders will have games starting Thursday and run through Sunday. Um, if you'll go to the next slide for me, please. Uh, this is the preliminary schedule of events. Um, to the right on the image, you'll see a map. Um, we will still do that a map that will be on the website. Our goal is to have a uh, business card size, uh, QR codes, and again, directing people to the visit widget um, to kind of navigate them through through our city. Um, Thursday, we believe invaders will have a game in the evening. Friday, we're going to have opening ceremonies. We would love to have a jet flyover. Uh, it's very expensive, so we're looking for a sponsor for that. Um, festival vendors at De Bremen, um, Alien Crawl at 11 and 4, Invaders Baseball Game, the Night Sky Morning Hike, and then Glow in the Dark um, Golf Tournament. On the next slide, um, Saturday events, obviously Festival and Vendors, Battle of the Bands, Galacticon, their kind of day events, Invaders Baseball Game is an evening event, uh, the Main Street Passport Program, day and night event, um, main entertainment uh, that will hopefully be at De Bremen, gates open at 5, the headliner is to begin at 8.30 p.m., um, Alien Crawl again, 11 and 4, Night Sky Morning Hike, and then that Saturday morning, our Recreation Department will continue with the Alien Chase, which is the 5K, 10K run, and then Sunday, we will end festival at 2 p.m., uh, but we'll still have an invasion baseball game Sunday night in hoping that um, if they couldn't catch it Friday or Saturday they're going to stay over on Sunday night for that. Next slide. Um, this is just a, a in a, kind of it was in your packet our local sponsorships are available please contact Renee Puckett if you're interested in sponsoring we have sponsorships from a thousand to ten thousand on the local level and then our corporate national sponsorships you can kind of see them here again just really want to be clear this was not intended when uh, we got a call about 150,000. Um, if there is a business or a local partner, absolutely, we welcome you to partner with us. But this is really on the national um, pie in the sky and hope you know that we can get some coverage from a national sponsor. Um, if you go to the next slide, this is our vendor uh, packet. We launched it on February 28th. Um, they're due back by June 1st. 150 non-food uh, vendor, 300 food concessions, uh, two locations to choose from for the entire time. A lesson learned uh, last year that the company did is they moved our vendors around each day. We will not be doing that this year. Um, really want to thank Kevin Mavers for his help in drafting this. It's very similar to all of our other vendor paperwork. And then a uh, member of our community, Ms. Carrie Moore, uh, she really reformatted it and tried to make it. Uh, she had that experience from the food truck side, um, and she was very helpful in helping us put this together. Um, if you are a local business or a merchant, you do have to have a business license. Any, Just like any other time, um, we ask that you go to community development. It's $35, and then uh, we'll be taking applications. It's a first come, first uh, serve on the location choice. Um, our plan is to have the vendors through uh, Pioneer Plaza and our side street, so our food trucks um, can be on the side street in this downtown area, as well as the De Bremen and Convention Center campus. Um, if you go to the next slide, please. Um, ticket sales and merchandise. So um, March 25th at 10 a.m., the Saturday night concert, Night Sky, Alien Crawl, and Alien Chase tickets will be live um, on our platform. Um, it's called Hold My Ticket. Um, we will have VIP ticketing that will be built into each event and be specialized. 
Um, you can see this was a draft design. This is not the pin that we have chosen uh, for some commemorative items. And the stuff to the right is our stuff from last year. Uh, we will be launching the merchandise. Um, this year, we're going to take six items. Um, last year was just a lot of inventory to keep up uh, with. And um, we just we don't have the manpower to continue to do that. So um, we'll still have a merch schedule. It'll be online and then, of course, throughout the festival go to the next slide and then here's a, just kind of a marketing media sneak peek um, like I said we did get the grant funding uh, $9,000 in spend uh, with no one-to-one uh, -one match it's a full cool 900,000 hundred percent paid for by the state tourism department so thank you to them um, but we are using the concept of 1947 cosmic um, really kind of trying to take people back and um, we'll have full campaigns through techless monthly a digital campaign and then of course um, some out of home so i'll stand for any questions questions council robert council Kennedy. um yes thank you chair i just want to thank juanita for this um uh, you know, it's it's approaching and I feel like it's good to get this information to the counselors. Um, I think there are some really great ideas there and I'm excited to hear who the headliner is. So thank you. Fantastic, Councilor Robot. Um, uh, just the one thing I, I, I am, I think that El Paso is an underserved market and I, I do, I'm glad you guys are looking at marketing there. Um, you know, my, my, my brother recently moved there, took a job there and there's not a whole lot to do down there. Mm -hmm. And so, and there, it's, 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 it's not, a, it's not a bad drive at all. Right. Let me get up here. So I'm glad that you guys are looking at that market as well as, a, as an opportunity for Roswell brand tourist. Um, a thousand other comments, but they'll wait for another time. I think, I think I'm overall, I'm really happy with it. Though. Yeah, I think it's great. Councilor Stubbs, did you have any questions or comments? You may not have heard, but that's okay. Okay, we'll move on. Thank you so much. I have I've made some notes of things that maybe we can talk about later. Just, just some thoughts. And there are some other things. Obviously, these are our main ones. Uh, we don't want to give the whole element of surprise. Um, but thank you. All right, fantastic. No. Thank you all. Hey, you <clears throat> oh, they want to stay. <laughs> <laughs> You're not staying. I got some stuff. I well, <laughs> I don't blame you. If you do want to leave, you do not hurt my feelings too much. All right. The resolution concerning the budget adjustments, these are action items. That is on page 52. Is that right? 52 of our packet? 51. 51. So uh, let's go ahead and uh, look at this. This is the uh, resolution that would approve the budget adjustments for this fiscal year ending the June 30th of 22. Good morning, Mr. Chair and committee. Um, today we are asking for an adjustment in revenues, expenses, and transfers. In revenues, we will be asking for $403,219 and in expenses, $1,448,456. Um, in revenues, we are asking for $7,269 in the general fund. This is for a grant reimbursement for internet costs. Um, this would go to the IT department. Um, in the library grant fund, we are asking for $27,541. These are for two different grants the library has received. In restricted donations, we're asking for $690, I'm sorry, $6,934. Um, this is for departmental donations. In the landfill fund, $355,000. This is the insurance reimbursement for the scraper. And in the water fund, $6,475. Um, we sold some scrap metal and this is giving them that budget authority. Um, and expenses in the general fund, um, we are asking for an increase in $5,000 for facilities maintenance. This is for janitorial supplies for both City Hall and the annex. Um, in the police department, we are asking for um, budget authority for general liability insurance for $46,255 and workers' comp insurance, $24,646. Um, also in police, we're asking to increase both their gas and water utilities, um, $3,800 for gas and $1,350 for water. 
For the Parks Department, $63,093. This is for the four gators that were approved through the February Council meeting. And in IT, the $7,269 for the grant reimbursement for internet costs. Um, throughout the other funds, the library to include both for the grants. Um, one grant would be used for training and furniture for $9,713. And the other grant would be used for library processing materials for $17,828. Um, in the restricted donations fund, $6,934 um, for departmental donations. Um, in the 2008 GEO Bond Debt Service Fund, um, we're asking for the budget authority increase of $3,174. This is just to cover additional debt service that was not budgeted for. In the landfill fund, the $355,000 for the um, reimbursement of insurance for the scraper, an additional $60,000 for a scale house upgrade project. In the water fund, the $6,475 for the sale of the scrap metal, and also $7,000. $100,062 and $651. Um, this is for the water line replacement on North Atkinson. This was also approved through the February Council meeting. And in the Waste Water Fund, $75,268. Um, this is for manhole repairs that was approved through the February Council meeting. <clears throat> And then transfers, 849537 This would go from the general fund to cemetery. And this is for the columbarium and committal shelter projects. And I stand for any questions. Uh, good presentation. You did just fine. You're doing great. You're doing great. Uh, I just wanted to make sure people understood that the, the, um, we have to include the transfer in here because it is an adjustment and where the line items are. So if that, to, to, to stop any confusion there. Um, the, uh, no, no, I don't have questions. Can we go back to the first expenditure slide? No, move right there. Oops, stop. So um, what happened with our, our police budget there? Why, why did we come why do we under budget on those things? That's, those are, that's a fairly significant adjustment. Uh, did something happen that made us that made us need to spend another sixty thousand dollars on insurance? That some events is what's what's the precipitation of, of this request? I <clears throat> excuse me. I believe when we did our insurance allocation during last year's budget, it just was not allocated appropriately to cover those expenses out of the police department. So this these were what they actually spent, and so. Now we're asking for that budget. I, I, I understand. I guess my question is why wasn't this? I mean, obviously, insurance is something we buy every year. What was this? Uh, was this a, a, a paper keep error was it, or was it, or was it actually more expenses than we anticipated? Well, every year we, we don't actually get the actual insurance bill till after the fiscal year starts. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and whatever method was, uh, was allocated that insurance. And again, throughout the course of the year, please realize that we've been adding vehicles and deleting vehicles. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, so as Chanel stated, I think what ended up happening would have been probably a paper error where the allocation was incorrect. Then when we're now getting the final actual insurance bill sure. and we're trying to kind of clean everything up, now we're hitting the correct funds. And we may end up seeing other funds as well in other, in other insurance line items where we're trying to make sure that they're getting uh, allocated appropriately. And that's what, in this case, that's what happened. So sure. overall, it's still the same money. It's still the same impact. It's just that now it's it's allocated more towards the where it should be. In this case, in the in the police department. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm sorry. So, so, uh, go ahead. Maybe I'm misunderstanding what you're asking here. Like you're asking for a budget adjustment. This 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 these monies are coming out of the unallocated funds, correct? For these two items. That is correct. So we under we under our budget. The amount we budgeted for insurance for these two police items, we we missed the mark by uh, uh, almost seven seventy thousand dollars. What I'm saying uh, is, is that wrong? Am I yeah, under these line items, uh, these line items were were under budgeted for the insurance purpose. Yeah, I understand that. Now now I'm not I don't believe we made an analysis on what other line items were over budgeted, but what I'm trying to I guess uh, 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 say here is that. For the for the police department for these insurance line items that were under budgeted, 
because of the, the way it was allocated. So the the adjustment will come out of the general fund unallocated. Right, I understand that. Fund. So all yes. the, the, the revenue that we're getting above and beyond what we what we allocate, it'll, it'll come out of that. I get that. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying it seems to me that we should be able to do a better job of, of anticipating what our insurance costs are. You know, a, a $5,000 adjustment versus a, the, the $70,000 adjustment. It feels abnormally like that's a huge error to make. We've been running a police department for a long time. Um, that's a huge error to make as far as, well, we, we underestimated the amount of insurance going to cost by $70,000. That's when, correct. When is, uh, when is our review? When, when does our insurance review take place? Do, do we know what month? That may have something to do with it as well as whenever the, the, the review is, you know, with each insurance company, sure. there, there's a review made and so that may have changed as so, well. And, and let, let me add, I guess, to you, to what you're just saying, and, and that's the reason as Jamie uh, kind of addressed in her slide, this year, when we're going over the budget for next year, yeah, the difference that we're doing now this year is that we're actually, they're going in and adjusting the budget to make sure that when they start budgeting for next fiscal year, they're actually using what the current activity budget line sure, is. Hopefully. So that we're not using a just a projected budget from from the preliminary. Where now we're actually we're gonna be basing our next year's budget on what that true activity is, which means that this line item will reflect a true activity sure. for what happened this year. And that will be the case for all of the grants. Right. Well, certainly forward. Hopefully we look we look back more than just one year. You know, again, we have a lot of data. We should have a lot of data. So that's well, just. And I have the allocation for this next fiscal year already. Part of what this is is uh, that we didn't get an invoice, so we were told to use what we paid in 2020. Sure. So it was budgeted that way for the 2021 sure. budget. Right. And then. That makes sense. Um, yeah. Or 2022, and then we ended up. Um, getting an actual bill uh, that ended up being a little more. So I actually already have the bill. I'm allocating it now. So what will be sure. in the budget for 2023 is gonna be what we actually pay, uh, allocated appropriately. Sure, sure. It's, you know, we, we always look at these every 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 meeting and, uh, you know, that's I think that's the thing that as a, as a, as a counselor, I'm always just saying, okay, you know, a lot of these things are paper or routine, housekeeping stuff, you know, money coming in, whatever, et cetera. So, but when we, we have something that I think, I think the reason and purpose we look at these is, is well, outside of whatever requirement that we have from the state, it, you know, um, the reason we look at these is because we're trying to identify um, if there was a, 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 a budget adjustment that happened that was what I call an unforced error. Like, there shouldn't be a reason why that, that we we missed the mark by seventy thousand dollars, you know, um, you know, been best practice. Obviously, the mistakes happen. I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus at all, but that, that that's all. And so I think that we, it's important for us to ask those questions. On okay, as I look at this, you know, what's the what's the what's the why? Was there you know? Because it could have been you could have said to me, well, we had 18 new police cars that we didn't anticipate having when we budgeted, you know. It sounds like in this case that we just simply didn't dig deep enough into the into the data to make sure we had an accurate budget line for the allocated for this. Well, and I think part of that, if you look at at past practice here and going back and using the original budget from the prior year, isn't mm -hmm. always the best thing to do. Sure. And you know, then uh, with Santa Fe being shut down for as long as they've been shut down, to get information out of them when they're not going in, um, and the budgets due before we actually got the bill. They sure. seem to be back on track now, so I've already got the bill, which is nice. Okay. Uh, because I agree, uh, I would like it to be allocated once, and we don't have to bring this many adjustments to sure. the council. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Fantastic. That, that's that was that was my concern. Thank you, Councillor Kenner. Do you have any questions or thoughts before we uh, take this to the table? No, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. At this time, I will accept a motion. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that we uh, recommend for approval um, resolution 22XX approving budget adjustments for fiscal year ending June 30, 2022 to the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second that we send this resolution to the consent agenda of the next full city council meeting that will amend the budget for fiscal year ending June 30, 2022. 
by the increasing of revenues and offsetting of expenses to the various funds. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Now to the resolution authorizing the disposal of the surplus. I need my sunglasses. <laughs> so this is our, we're, we're getting back on track with our monthly resolutions. Uh, we took a little bit of a break there over the first of the year to get caught up on some other stuff. If you'll notice, this one has a lot of stuff from Airforce. They're housed out there. I would stand for questions on this. Can you come to my garage? Take care of some. <laughs> hey, bring it on over. I'll sell anything. I have no questions with the list. I looked at it and it, this is for cleaning house. So um, it doesn't look like there's anything that's um, sizable to the point of really making massive concerns. Um, any questions? Councilor Kennard, any questions? Um, I just was curious. I know that with firearms uh, and stuff like that that come from the PD, we can only sell them to licensed firearm dealers. But I was just curious on this other crime scene uh, equipment. Does does is does that same rule apply? I mean, are we sending these or selling these to uh, other law enforcement agencies? This it does go out on an open bid. Give me just one moment. Uh, it, uh, I'm getting a message that the go to meeting is offline. Can we check and see? Uh, I know, Councilor Kenner, you're with us by phone, correct? Or are you online? I'll go to. I'm online on my phone. Can are, you see the screen, Councilor? I sure can. Okay, are, are you, is she on the council uh, online or the regular? And you have uh, Rita, okay. uh, Judy, uh, so I'm not sure what link they're looking at. Okay, continue then, go ahead. Uh, that one is it goes out it would go out on the open market it has been cleaned out by it and the police department to make sure that there's nothing in there so it's basically just the equipment okay okay thank you okay fantastic anyone else I'll entertain a motion unless there's any more questions. Uh, I will be happy to give you a motion. Uh, Mr. Chair, I move that we uh, recommend to for approval to the full council resolution 22XX authorizing the disposal of certain surplus personal property to the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and we have a second to send this uh, resolution to the consent agenda of the next full city council. Uh, which authorizes the disposal of certain surplus and personal property. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. This time, let's consider the resolution that authorizes the city of Roswell to file a grant application with the U.S. Department of Interior, Bureau of Reclamation for the funding of the drought contingency water conservation plan. So, unfortunately, this has come up before we could actually bring in our complete water conservation plan to the council. That plan right now is in draft form at the Office of the State Engineer. It's required as part of our funding that we use for like the water towers, those kind of projects. This, uh, Councilor Stubbs actually brought this to our attention. And what we'd like to do is author get authorization to apply for the grant. It's a 50-50 match for up to $200,000. And it helps us to actually get our water conservation plan going. We can use it for salaries, benefits, equipment, supplies, materials, travel, and training. Uh, it does require a resolution of the governing body to apply. One of our partners that would like to get in on this with us is the Pecos Valley uh, Conservancy District. I spoke with their chair or their uh, superintendent a couple of weeks ago. What our plan would be is when we go out and start doing this water conservation stuff, we want to speak with a common voice. Both of us together saying the same thing, pushing the same projects. Okay, do we have any questions? Councilor Kennard, any questions? 
No, sir. Thank you. Okay, cut and dry. And uh, I'm. Uh, we can thank Councillor Stubbs for for helping bring this to our attention, so we can. Uh, work with the reason this just sort of showed up was we do have a, a timeline on this. Absolutely, we have to get our application done by April 14th. Okay. We are looking at a grant writer to help us do some of that work. Okay. All right. If there's no other questions or <clears throat> thoughts, I'd entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I move that we. Um, can I put this consent? Sure. Great. Um, I move that we recommend uh, for approval of the full council resolution um, 22X X or just one X in this case. Uh, XX uh, authorizing the city of Roswell to file a grant application with the U.S. Department of the Interior Bureau of Reclamation for funding the Drought Contingency Water Conservation Plan. Uh, to second. The we have a motion. We have a second to send to full council on the consent agenda resolution to authorize the city to file a grant application with the U.S. Department of Interior uh, concerning the reclama reclamation. Uh, for the Bureau of Reclamation for funding the Drought Contingency Water Conservation Plan. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed same sign. Motion passes. Thank you. And yes, sir. Thank you very much. The next is going to be uh, the uh, uh, the uh, request to authorize to hold the public hearing. Uh, for an ordinance uh, that would allow the city uh, to, to amend ordinance 1909 for the purpose of increasing the funding package of the New Mexico Environment Department uh, Clean Water State Revolving Fund loan number WSF uh, SRF 097. Lewis, I'm assuming this is yours. I'm going to explain the technical part. And then I'll Juan's going to tag team, team and do the finance. All right, you have 30 seconds and go. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> a shitty situation. <laughs> okay, the wastewater. Do you have a beat button on the. I'm kidding. Go ahead. I heard it. Okay. <laughs> it's all a joke. You know what the wastewater treatment plant is. So the wastewater treatment plant takes all the, the waste. And it produces two products, a solid product called the sludge, the water project, the water effluent that is uh, either given to the farmers uh, for irrigation or in the winter months goes into the river. They both have EPA requirements. When we started this in 2019, we were looking at the sludge solid product project only because basically we take the sludge right now, put them in drying bids and manually turn them by a loader to dry them out. Of course, that doesn't work when it rains and it doesn't work in the cold weather. So we started coming up with a, a screw press. Basically, the sludge will go in there. The water will be squeezed out. It goes to the sludge beds, but the efficiency of drying has increased drastically. While we were doing this project, the wastewater plant was given a mandate. All plants were given a mandate to have so much dissolved oxygen and your effluent, the water going out. So in that sense, we have to, if you've ever had an aquarium, you have to put pumps in there to generate oxygen. So that's basically what we have to do now is put pumps to generate oxygen. So when it goes out, regardless whether it's sending it out to the irrigation or into the, to the river, it has a certain percentage of dissolved oxygen. So we started this in 2019, it was $5.5 million. As you see in the packet, inflation has slowly creeped up. And when Not we- so slowly. And when we bid the project uh, in February, it came up to the $8 million uh, bid. Uh, both companies were in the same, so I'm pretty sure that's pretty good. And they're reputable companies. We've dealt with them before, so we know that's the market price right now. Check with New Mexico ED. Uh, they're seeing the same thing on a state level. And then with our consultants, HDR, they're seeing the same thing on a national level. HDR is a national firm. so. Looking at it, I came up with the computation, but Juan, uh, in dealing with DFA, the, my number was a little higher than they would allow. And I stand for any questions on the technical side. So let me just say, uh, and I don't know if you've done a tour out there, um, or if Councillor Kennard, 
I encourage both of you even still to it's when you see I probably should have never toured it because after I toured it with Mike and our, our staff out there, I couldn't sleep for three or four days. I was scared to death if anything ever went wrong. <laughs> but but we have phenomenal, phenomenal experts out there. And I, 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 could, I was just so impressed in how smooth of an operation we have. Uh, but to catch up with technology is going to be a huge thing because those drying beds, as I sat out there and looked at that and to see how how full those sludge tanks can get waiting to get out to it uh this is going to to drastically change that time so i i this is this is vital to move forward and to get on top of this before this before inflation gets any higher we just correct. have to we've got to correct so i have i i'm fully in support of this uh council kinder do you have any questions on the so we're, we're not talking about the financial end of it as much right now as we are the technical end of it. Do you have any questions? Um, no, sir. As long as I've been on the council, this has been something that we've discussed. So I yes, I agree yes, we need to move forward. Thank you so much. Yes. Juan, are you covering the financial yes, end? Yes, uh, Mr. Chair, just real briefly, I think, you know, with the technical piece covered by Lois, it pretty much gives everybody an overview of the need for, for this uh, amendment to Ordinance 1909. Uh, when this information was shared with NMED, again, as Lewis stated, they, this is what they've seen with other projects throughout the state. And obviously with this funding uh, program, uh, they, they were willing to offer us uh, an additional amount of $3.9 million to make sure that we cover this award uh, for, for this project. Uh, so what you have before you is a, a draft uh, ordinance that has been shared with legal. Uh, this is a standard form that the state provides uh, to us uh, to make sure that we proceed forward and, adver and advertise for the amendment of the original loan uh, under 1909. And this will allow us for the additional funding of $3.9 million. Of course, there's always unanticipated things that may happen, uh, but I think this will cover 90, I would say 95%, 99% of all of the funding needed. If there's a little bit of a gap, we have sufficient funding sources available in our on, on uh, allocated funding in our wastewater to be able to cover that gap. Uh, so at this time, we're only asking for the authorization to advertise and hold the public hearing to consider adoption of this proposed ordinance. The infrastructure committee recommended award of the project during their meeting on February 28th. Is that correct? Correct. So we're trying to do two things parallel, the award and as well as the funding for the gap. Mm -hmm. What's time for any questions? Um, I'm not going to tie us up with wordsmithing on here. There are some things in the actual ordinance that uh, some, some scriveners that need to maybe be fixed. So maybe we let uh, Councillor Stubbs even look at this before and, and, between and, now and then. But that's it's easy stuff. It's and, and Mr. Chair, I, I would say if if I could be provided with that language and I will share it with them yes. because this this template and ordinance comes from the state. Yeah. And it has been reviewed by by their office. And, yeah. uh, you know, they did uh, notify me that any changes will have to be okay. resolved so by the, them. The exact language, it was just a point. This is, this is what, this is the document provided to us by them. I'm surprised that they would not use proper English. So. Well, it's very similar to DOD. <laughs> I have to use their templates and yeah, they, wouldn't use they them. Got, no, okay. We, it doesn't change anything about it, but there is there are two Scribner errors there, but we'll live, we'll we'll look at it and just see. We'll go from there. Okay. Any other questions, comments from 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 from? I will entertain a motion. R reminder: This will need to go. This this cannot go right, through. Um, and also, it is uh, to advertise. Yep. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Absolutely, Mr. Chair. I move that we um, we uh, recommend full council. Uh, uh, this is not you so said. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm okay. I apologize, Mr. Chair. I move that we recommend a full council authorization uh, to rec uh, to approve authorization to advertise to hold a public hearing and consider adoption of Ordinance 22XX authorizing the City of Roswell uh, to amend Ordinance 1909 for the purpose of increasing funding the funding package of the New Mexico Environmental Department Clean Water State Revolving Fund Loan Number CWSRF97. Okay. We have a motion. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. I'm not going to repeat all that. I'm just going to say that uh, uh, we have a motion and a second to, to send a full council on the regular agenda the uh, uh, request to authorize uh, 
a public hearing for this uh, ordinance. Uh, I would ask that uh, also part of this on the abstract, if you can add to the board and committee actions that the infrastructure committee uh, rewarded, uh, recommended award as well, and with whatever their vote was, if you could add that to that abstract. Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Thank you so much. And uh, last but not least, a consideration of American Rescue Plan distribution for small businesses. So let's just discuss that. That um, we're still, uh, and let me just start, I think maybe Janie, because you and I have had a conversation on this. Uh, we're still waiting on the last report from the federal guidelines as to to the, the, the last decision that should come out when? April 1st. April 1st. So we're, that's what sort of has stuck us because the original language they gave us was, was very loose and, and, and gave broad brush for interpretation. And I think that they looked at that and they realized some mistakes they made uh, from prior uh, authorization of, uh, of things. So they tightened the belt on that. And I think they've looked at that. And I, I fully expect by April 1, we're going to see an even, even tighter belt. Uh, so, uh, um, so, but I do think this is worthy of discussion so that we can, so, it, so, so, so we're aware and the staff's aware of sure. maybe some things. So Councilor Robick, let me just turn over to you. Yeah, no, no thanks. And, and when, when this money first came available, um, from the uh, from the from the feds, um, I think that we we've talked several times um, about that this is an opportunity potentially to to give grants to some of our businesses um, to help them uh, and especially what we what we've what we discussed and talked about is help them uh, in in the places where we need redevelopment um, in places where um, you know, we've got some great things going on right now. Um, like we've got a couple of new restaurants coming in up north and stuff like that. But um, to, to build, to, to 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 buy a flat piece of land and to build a new building, right. you know, those 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 businesses uh, like Texas Roadhouse and, and folks like that, they've got their plans all ironed out. They know exactly how it works. They know exactly how they're going to make money. Um, um, folks like that are not going to come in and say, "Wow, let me, let's look at that old KBIM building." downtown and they're not even going to touch out a tenth of pole because it's going to be very difficult for them to make money it takes really crazy people to do that to come in and look at an old building and uh and say hey let's do something with that and um uh, and i think it's imperative the city if we have the opportunity to um to ease the burden of that renovation um and particular things that we discuss and again and, and obviously we can't move forward on this until we have a, a better idea you know, I think we thought we had a good idea about it when we first started talking about this, and then the, the, the additional guidance came out that kind of clouded everything up. So we're gonna have to wait for more guidance um, that uh, um, to, to to be able to use that money to, to ease that burden to to take those properties that um, on their own it's very difficult for for a, a business to come in and say, well, gosh, you know, you gotta come in, you buy the building, do all the things you normally cost to a business. But by the way, there's gonna be this huge expense in putting in uh, fire suppression or huge expense in putting in an upgrade for ADA and stuff like that. And so, um, so uh, it, I think it's, it behooves the city to, in those situations, if we have the ability to, especially with money that comes from, not from GRT operations, but from, from, from recovery funds, um, specifically mentioned and targeted at, at recovering tourism, et cetera, things that were affected by shutdowns. Um, uh, to, to be able to allocate those funds to make those businesses stronger, and so that's that's the thinking behind this. I think it's I think it, it would it, if we can do that. There's a obviously there's a benefit to to the uh, to the businesses, which is a tax benefit to us. It's also a benefit to the quality of life for the community. The more buildings downtown uh, and in in our and things that old things that we want to uh, get renovated, the more things we get renovated, the more things when somebody comes to this town and says, "Do I want to live here?" They see nice stores. Um, and uh, they, they have things to do, et cetera, et cetera. And so I think we need, we need to continue to put that focus. And certainly that's a huge uh, potential for this money. Although obviously at this point, we're at a place where unfortunately, um, again, as we initially thought, we were had broader and they, and they tightened that up. So I, I do hope that the next council um, 
we'll continue to, to push this forward. Um, I don't see a reason for a motion at this time, Mr. Chair, um, because it's. But drawing the attention to it, I yeah, think good I, I, I think it is absolutely good, and certainly, you know, as a as a private citizen here in here in here in a little bit, a couple in about a month, I I'll certainly be advocating and, and lobbying council to yeah. to continue to push forward with that. So, um, thank you for putting on the agenda. I appreciate that, uh, Mr. Chair. Councilor Kenner, do you have any anything to add to that? Um, no, sir. Thank you. Okay. All right. At this time, I will open for uh, public comment then if there's anybody online. Let me start with Councillor Stubbs, and it, she may not have the ability to 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 unmute and discuss with us right now. I don't know what all she's into, but mm -hmm. Councillor Stubbs, if you are, uh, would like to say something, there you go. You feel free. Please speak to us. I still have the capability to unmute. <laughs> there you go. No. Well, I didn't know if you were driving or something, so thank you. Go ahead. No, <laughs> thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. No, I appreciate the uh, opportunity to have been able to uh, sit in on this finance committee uh, the last few years. And I really appreciate all the hard work that council and uh, staff, of course, have done. Um, we all know the great shape we're in uh, financially and it's due to uh, the dedicated uh, staff and, and this uh, committee. So thank you all and uh, no further comment. Okay. Let me make a comment uh, concerning uh, uh, Councillor Stubbs and Councillor Kennard real quick, and then we'll go to uh, to public comment. Let me just start out by saying to to our uh, committee member, uh, Councillor Kennard, uh, uh, you've been a pleasure to work with, and I, I appreciate uh, the vigor. I appreciate the uh, the energy. Uh, you know, uh, life's hard sometimes, and life's busy, and especially going through COVID with children at home and uh, then going through a pregnancy uh, and having children at home and having COVID and everything. Life can be difficult, but uh, you made a commitment to this community uh, when you were uh, brought uh, forth as a uh, consideration for this council. And I think you have served our community very well. Uh, I, I've known Margaret for a number of years when I was the chair of the Republican Party. I had a, a vacancy on my uh, 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 as the second vice chair and uh, out of uh, the thousands and thousands and thousands of people in the city of Roswell that I could have chosen uh, to bring forth as my second vice chair, I chose Margaret Kennard and it was a, I stand by that choice. It was a good choice and she was a huge benefit to me there. I know that uh, when uh, Margaret gets involved with anything, she puts 100%. But I just want to say, it has been uh, my honor and my privilege to have worked with you over the last two years, and I just want to publicly say that. Uh, also, for Councillor Stubbs, uh, Councillor Stubbs was the first person when I came across the uh, when I came on the the council uh, to sort of take me under her wing and start teaching me the things of uh, municipal government. Uh, I, I will say that Councillor Stubbs has more knowledge in municipal government in her pinky finger than the rest of us do in our entire. Uh, every every one of us put together. Uh, Councilor Stubbs, you have a passion for this city and you have a passion for the people who live here and that shows and uh, Roswell is a much greater place to live because of the contributions that you have given to our city as well. And I just want to publicly thank both of you uh, and it has been a pleasure working with both of you. So now uh, at this out, Margaret, you've unmuted. Did you have something you'd like to say? Yes, sir. Well, I didn't know if this was appropriate, uh, you know, following Jacob on the uh, American rescue, but what I wanted to say was, um, you know, I'm disappointed uh, in the candidates that ran, um, that couldn't give us, you know, one positive thing that the city has done. Rather, we were just beat up. The staff was beat up. Um, we know that the staff does a fantastic job. We know uh, the professionals that help make this city great. So I just want to let you guys know that it's been a privilege to work with such a, a high caliber of professionals. Um, I really wish the best. Uh, I'm still going to be around. <laughs> You're not getting rid of me. But uh, I just want you to know how important you are to this city. And um, I will say this again at the city council meeting. So thank you. 
No, we, we appreciate you and we love both of you. And, and I mean that y'all y'all made an impact not only in this community, but you've made an impact in my life as well. And I'm forever grateful of that. Uh, do we have anyone else who has uh, any um, uh, public comments? Uh, I see uh, Ms. Kane Dorhofer's online and we have a couple of others. Do we have any other public comment at this time? If you'll unmute, state your name so we'll, we'll know. Good morning, okay, Jason. Reed. Good morning, uh, Madam Cookie Maker and Fudge Maker. You do a wonderful job at that, and thank you for helping us in our elections. Go ahead, we'll, we'll hear from you at this time. I want to thank you for stopping by and see if I needed anything on Tuesday. I thought this was a very interesting meeting. I'm going to be watching the UFO Festival evolve, and just thank you for checking on me. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else has anything they'd like to add? All right. Uh, this this may very uh, Larry, Mr. Conley, Mayor Conley, please. Larry Conley, 2018 in Canto. Uh, this might be amateur because these came up the last minute. Uh, suggestion on the water. Roger Buckley. You know, Roger? Yes. He's retired. He's doing nothing. He might be able to help you be a grant writer. And we use him a lot. You do? Good. Yes, we do. Good. All right. That, that, that's one. And then on the insurance, the workman's comp and everything. I'm sure the police department belongs to the national police organization or something, and they pay dues. Why don't we just tell them the call and get their estimate what workman's comp and things like that just going up? That's my suggestion. And then this came up. I wasn't planning this, but we're going to have tours going out to the airport. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> Your Matthews, pay attention. <laughs> your your three minutes are up. <laughs> okay. See this picture? No. What is? <laughs> we have time between the city and the county. Hopefully, they could tear this down. If they can't tear it down, they can't agree who's going to pay what. Boom, boom, boom. Take. A green bin, you know, one of the big dumpsters that the they have out there. Park it right in front of this because Tiki's isn't out there. So park it in front of it, like, hey, this is fake point. This is we're tearing this building down, and we have a screen. And I will get another copy of this, and I will give this to. People that they can show it around at the county. And I may not be able. There's a new council member that I, that was cheap, wouldn't tear that down. But other than that, I, I'm not sure I'll be welcome in these meetings anymore. But well, I hope you're still around for the next two years. You'll keep it entertaining, if nothing else. Okay. Okay. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, I, I bring dumpster. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right. I'm. I don't know. Uh, uh, our uh, in next incoming mayor Jennings has the authority and the ability to determine who the next chairs will be. I have no idea whether or not I will even be on the finance committee. So let me just say thank y'all. It's been a pleasure to work with y'all over the last two years, and we'll just see where the Lord takes us from here. Okay. Meeting is adjourned 1027. Thank you. Thank you. Mike, are you about to jump into something? Okay, if I if I could um are we I know